Hello, this is Amber Parrott from Morgan James Publishing, and today I'm so excited to connect with Heather Kent, the author of I Left My Toxic Relationship, Now What? Heather, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. It's so great to see you. Yeah, absolutely. You too. And I'm so excited to talk more about your book. So I do want to dive in and ask you some questions. First and foremost, what inspired you to write this book? So as a registered psychotherapist um, here in Canada, I have seen a great number of women coming into my office over the past few years who were struggling with what to do after having left um, a toxic or an abusive relationship. And it was just so striking to me how many people were coming in and suffering from this problem. And so it was just kind of overwhelming to me that there were so many people suffering and so many, this was really prevalent. Sure. And it was actually, and like these people had come in and they had made the really brave and really difficult decision to um, decide to leave, that they knew, they recognized that something was wrong, this wasn't okay, and they managed to somehow extract themselves, but they didn't know what to do next or where to turn or like how to recover or, or move on from that. And so it really resonated with me as well because it is something that I had gone through personally um, in the past. And so I had had my own experience and my own journey through um, recovering from the aftermath of leaving an abusive and toxic relationship. And so it was really my brave and inspiring client that, that um, in, like inspired me to write this book because it seemed to me that there are many people who are in a situation like this, many more than I perhaps realized when I first sure. started to work in private practice. And so it was my clients who, who really inspired me to write the book because uh, my hope is that it would then, you know, be able to benefit so many more people. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really impactful that you have both that personal and uh, professional connection to the topic that you can, you know, again, be able to speak on it from a firsthand experience and also from, um, you know, the education and the, the perspective and experience you have with working with other people. So that's, that's really impactful. Thank you. Yeah, um, it was interesting. I was asked once um, in a previous interview about like, oh, look, so you have this personal kind of connection to the topic. And so it must be really um, like helpful for your clients to know that. And they, they asked me if, you know, if sharing was something that was typical sure. for, their, for that therapist to do. And so, um, every, of course, every psychotherapist has their own sort of approach and their own way of doing things. But I find that, you know, if it is clinically relevant to the person's experience and what they're, what they're going through, I do find that it can be extremely validating. Yeah. And, um, helps the client to feel heard like I see you I hear you I feel you I can like I remember these things and, right. I, and you're not crazy right this is something that that I I can tell you that I remember feeling as well and going through it as well so it really helps um, I think to, to feel heard and to feel connected to someone who can understand the experience sure. not exactly because every situation is a little bit different but um, yeah it has been I think hopefully validating for for clients to know that I I can speak from experience as well as from sort of clinical training. Yeah, yeah. And you're living proof that there is another side, like the other side, right? Absolutely. You know, your audience is in this place where they just got out of this relationship, you know, they need that hope that you can get you know healed and move on. Yeah, I and mean, it is a very dark place and it feels so heavy. And so and so that's sort of again sort of the goal of, of the book and my purpose of, of my message is really to, you know, there is the, another side and there is like a whole other new and better life sort of waiting yeah. for you. Yeah. As you as you move through this process, which can be painful and difficult and hard and all the things. And it's totally worth it. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. So I do want to ask, what are the signs for those who aren't at that point where they've left the relationship? How do you recognize what are the signs that you're in a toxic relationship? Oh my gosh, that's such a good question. So um, so for, for me, in my experience in my relationship, um, at first, like it's, sometimes it's not very obvious because mm -hmm. As, as you become accustomed to the situation and as you're you know, living with someone or be, you've been with someone for X amount of time, X amount of years, things can become really normalized. And yeah. you know, people's behavior, we can 
we can explain it away. We can make excuses. We can we can think, oh well, you know, it's not so bad. You know, if someone if this other situation is much worse than this, and and yeah. oh, this is only because they were tired, or this is because they had a really stressful day, or we we're really good at rationalizing away a lot of those signs, and so it's it's harder to see, and so. Um, I really didn't notice for a long time. It took other people to kind of point things out to me or before I had to catch on. And so in my experience, it was, you know, checking my emails and being really controlling about who I was allowed to spend time with under the guise of these people aren't good for you. These people are somehow, ma you know, manipulating you or they are a bad influence on you. You shouldn't be with them. So if they're trying to isolate you from your friends, I had clients who were isolated from their family members and told that their family members were, you know, out to get them or against them in some way. Yeah. Um, and so these, these manipulation tactics are very subtle but very insidious. And so you kind of don't really notice it until all of a sudden you're like, oh, you still have friends. Like, you still have a social life and you still enjoy these things and now I don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and sure. they're always always wondering like for me another big one was when I came home every day you know what was I coming home to well it was kind of a little bit like a Russian roulette in terms of what kind of mood are they going to be in yeah what am I going to say that's going to set them off that kind of walking on eggshells feeling yeah. um and then of course any kind of physical or sexual violence is a huge indicator obviously um that this is an abusive situation that is not safe but then if you don't have those things, a lot of people are like, well, you know, I'm not being harmed. Right. So it's okay. So it's not abuse. And so that's another really easy way to kind of explain things away. Um, so I've come up with this little um, sort of thing to, to help people to identify it. It's called, the, you know, almost like the toxic relationship test. And so um, am I someone who is experiencing um, high levels of stress and anxiety around this person. Am I always worried about what kind of mood I was going to be in? Am I always doing things to try to make sure that they are happy and placating them? Am I putting their needs ahead of my own? Um, am I worried about what they might do or say at any given point? And so if the answer is yes to any of these questions, then chances are you are dealing with a toxic or abusive relationship yeah. situation. And, you know, have I been cut off from family members and friends? Am I, you know, free to come and go and do what I please um, without the other person getting angry or upset? Uh, so yeah, these are sort of the questions to ask yourself. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a little bit of a mental check box, right? Um, and so if, if, if there's a yes to those, then you might want to have a more serious conversation with yourself or with a therapist or someone else who's more objective family members are helpful and supportive but yet not necessarily objective sure so and so it'd be i think more productive to talk to someone who is a little bit more removed from the situation so that you can kind of analyze that yeah uh, more productively yeah what a valuable tool i think you know you really hit it on the head whenever you said that it can be so easy especially if there's no uh, you know, physical abuse, but even if there is physical abuse, you know, it can be so easy to rationalize it away and you, you start telling yourself the same thing over and over until you're in this trap and you don't start, you don't listen to yourself. Yeah. Um, and, and then you are also being told in this whole time over, over the period of however long you've been with the person, you know, you're overreacting, mm -hmm. you're misremembering. Yeah. I never did that. That never happened. I didn't say that. Um, you're too sensitive. Um, so these are, you know, what we would call sort of gaslighting tactics, where you're really made to kind of question your reality and kind of how you remember things, and then you start to think, well, maybe I did get it wrong. Maybe it is my fault. Maybe I did, you know, do something to right. take them off. Um, and really, it's about them not being able to take responsibility for their actions. Mm -hmm. um, but you are really starting to question. That and believe that things are your fault, and that it is, it is something that you misremembered or miscommunicated yeah. or, or misunderstood, or you're somehow wrong and it's somehow your fault. So, that's a, another really great green sign that you're in a toxic or abusive relationship that doesn't come with necessarily bruises and cuts, right? Yeah, yeah, that is so heartbreaking, but it is, it is so 
it gives me so much hope that you know you're providing these tools that uh, can help people recognize that and take steps to get out of that situation. Yeah, and that's really the the, the purpose of the book is how to create a sort of a step by step sort of guideline. Yeah, of specific um, clinical things that you can do, interventions and strategies that can be used that you can start to practice to help yourself get out of those ways of thinking, those distorted things that we tend to believe about ourselves over time. You know, at the hands of these people saying and repeating these negative messages over and over again. And so yeah. it's really a way. It's like the, a path to healing and, and moving beyond those, those things. Yeah. Yeah. And a roadmap to that path. So thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. So a, a couple of other questions I want to ask before we wrap up. So what is the biggest takeaway message you want the audience to walk away with? You're not alone. Mm. Is the biggest one. Yeah. You are absolutely not alone. And I know that it feels like you're stranded, you know, on a raft in the middle of the ocean by yourself and it's just vast nothing and in all directions but i promise you you are not alone you are not the only one who is going through this and there is help available to you and even though it may feel very scary and it may seem like it's impossible it may seem like it's too hard um you are absolutely worth it yeah and you are not alone and there are people who can walk with you and and take that journey with you who are um, you know, strong and able to help you in your journey to that place. Yeah, yeah, I love that. That's so powerful. Thank you. Uh, so one final question, Heather, where if viewers, you know, they're really resonating with what you're saying, they want to learn more about you and about the book, where can viewers at home connect with you? So they can actually go to um, my website that I've created for the book. It's called toxicrelationshipbook.com. So pretty easy. Um, and people can absolutely connect with me there. My links to Instagram and Facebook are there. If they would like to um, book a call to talk to me and I can do a consultation with them to kind of see what's going on for them and see if uh, I can provide any suggestions of yeah. any next steps for them, they absolutely can book a call with me. There's a link to my calendar where they could um, book a one on one session with me, um, which is of charge of course and so if they would like to do that they can absolutely get in touch with me via toxicrelationshipbook.com awesome thank you so much heather not just for writing it but uh you know for being willing to share your message and your powerful tools and viewers thank you for joining us at home be sure to grab a copy of i left my toxic relationship now what wherever books are sold heather congratulations again on the release of your book Thank you so much. And thank you so much for having me. Um, and I look forward to connecting with all of you who may be watching. Yeah, awesome. Have a good one. You too. Thank you.